Yeah, man, it's the 24th of September, 2023, and I have some exciting news today. Uh, 10,000 subscribers on this channel, 10,000 targeted individuals. Uh, for the most part, I believe that they are targeted people. Of course, there's a few trolls and gang stalkers too, uh, but a lot of you guys, most of you guys are targeted individuals, and we continue to grow in our community. I appreciate all of the support. I'm so, so much. I want to thank you guys for all of the support. I've been on this YouTube channel for eight years talking about remote neural monitoring when nobody wants to believe it. People want to insult you and tell you you're crazy and all of this different stuff that we have to go through. But I've endured that and I've had a lot of support from you guys. And, you know, I found out that the exact same thing is happening to all of you as well. So, uh, we'll talk about that and three other things. I'm going to talk about the obsession of gang stalking in general. And I'm going to talk about education and I'm going to talk about finance a little bit as well. So uh, just to carry on with this 10,000 subscribers, I, I usually get anywhere from maybe three to 20 in a day. And so it's moving up fairly quickly, fairly consistently. It it, there is days when it goes down, and I do believe that gang stalkers collaborate to unsubscribe you or to somehow go on my channel and delete you and do things like that. But overall, it goes up very steadily, just like a, a mutual fund or something. It just continues to grow. And I attribute that to a few things. One, uh, you guys are dealing with the exact same thing. And countless hundreds if not thousands of people in the comments and messaging me personally saying that's exactly what's happening to me and you're the first person i found to actually describe the real things that's happened that are happening to me and it's true because that's how gang stalkers use this satellite broadcast neural monitoring mind control technology they use it the same way. There's only so many ways that they can use it. And they do different things. They all have their uh, their little skits that they try and the, the things that they love. And overall, it's the same. They're using one technology. It's remote neural monitoring satellite broadcast technology, EMF broadcast. And so we deal with, in general, the same things. And I think it's a good idea to mention that it's there's probably a very high percentage of people that are targeted or um or that that don't even know that they are being targeted they are just living their life and thinking oh something weird's happening oh i feel some kind of way oh my toes hurt I, you know going to the doctor or uh being prescribed medication and never really figuring out what's going on. And that just depends. If if your gang stalkers decide to uh, put you on public and they have a bunch of street theater going on, then you're going to know about this stuff a little bit quicker. And if they decide to start doing broadcast telepathy, then you'll know about this stuff a little quicker. So let me give you a few examples. Uh, 2013 is when weird things started to happen for me. And it wasn't until probably near the end of 2015 or going into 2016 uh, that I actually knew what was happening and that I actually knew that this was remote neural monitoring and this was broadcast and these were people like regular people that are doing this, people that get access to neural monitoring and, and decide to use it maliciously. And typically the, the drug addicts and the losers and the, the idiots that don't have anything else going in their life and because it's not isolated to them they're not the only ones that got neuro monitoring you know you think all these uh successful business people and judges and lawyers and senators and athletes and you think they don't have their neuro monitoring i promise they do they have their neuro monitoring but they also have their own life that they live and do things and they they don't they don't sit around with it and use it for gang stalking that's childish and that's abusive and that's the malicious things that people do that have nothing else to do. The, the basically the ones with like these children mindsets where they can sit in a room 
uh, you know, for days and weeks and months playing a video game. That's kind of how it is. So moving into the obsession of gang stalking. If you have gang stalkers that are on your neural monitoring, I say on your channel, okay, they're using an online interface to control settings on a satellite broadcast system to connect to you unconsensually on a neurological level. And when they do that, for them, it, it is like kind of like a video game. You know, they're able to put this mind control thing on their head and connect to you and receive your thought processes and know your life and they become obsessed. And for me personally, I can speak for myself that I've had the same group of gang stalkers on my neural monitoring for a decade. So in 2013, when this stuff started happening, it was little stuff. My computers were becoming compromised. My phones were hacked. My computers were hacked. And I could tell that something weird was going on. And I knew my stuff was hacked. And then little things, you know, like I would go outside and uh, on my back patio and it could be five o'clock in the afternoon or it could be two or three o'clock in the morning and it didn't matter. If I walked out on the back patio, I would hear a car squeal through the woods. Like on the next street over, I would hear this car squeal every time. And I was always like, what in the world? Like it's three o'clock in the morning. And like every time I walk out here, I hear this car squeal. It's like the most wild coincidence in the world. Okay. It wasn't even until 2016, several years later, when I had gang stalkers talking out loud and laughing about all the stuff they were doing. And I walked out there and they did that car squeal. And it, it all hit me, you know, it, and that's what happens. Like when you really figure out what's going on, you can kind of look back and say, oh, oh, that's what that, this has been going on for for three or four years, you know, and that's that's what happened. And um, there were some changes that took place in my life uh, around the beginning of 2013. And I started also uh, because I, I got out of a relationship. And the person that I got out of a relationship with was um, becoming somebody that I believed was was learning about neural monitoring. And then I also started to associate with some other people that ended up being gang stalkers. And so over the next couple years, it evolved from hacking to weird noises. And then it just became something. I don't know if they, they just decide, OK, let's do it. Uh, for it just kind of gradually gets into this thing, but they started to gang stalk full time with remote neural monitoring, and you know at first it was like I was hearing things in the in in like mediums is what I would call them, like some energy disbursement. And I know you guys have experienced this, where you hear like people talking through like some other noise, like even the refrigerator motor running that buzz, you know, and you kind of hear people in it and like water faucets running or traffic or even airplanes flying over any of those kind of things where you, you, you hear those noises and it disperses the signal to where you can hear people. And then you start trying to record this stuff and, uh, and it doesn't work because it's a signal and it's not a sound wave. It's a signal. And that's, I've got videos on, uh, some of the ways that I've had success recording sound wave or signals, I'm sorry, uh, because you, you're never going to have success recording a signal with a microphone like that. You have to use something different. And uh, there are ways to do it. It's not something I really care about that much trying to record them. But there was plenty of instances where I was able to actually receive a signal as interference into a recording and hear people that were somewhere else that I know they weren't with me and, uh, and I know those people. And I already knew that some of those people were involved with gang stalking. And that was a huge confirmation and a, a, a big score on gaining evidence, I guess you could say. And, and I've also had all kinds of stuff where, you know, with my social media accounts, because that's where they live stream. It's like Facebook is like the biggest one where they're live streaming on Facebook and they're basically running in the background of your Facebook account. You know, and they can they can make like a um, 
like a secondary version of your Facebook that's still the real thing, okay? And you could log into it and look like your normal Facebook, but it's like their version where they run their live streams. And I've had like all kinds of settings pop up on my profile page of like different ways to make connections and broadcast, you know, over this uh, IP address and, and stuff like that. I've had uh, logins that weren't my, actually log in, my actual login that would log into my actual account. Um, I've had pages and groups that would come up with like a mock version, which is their version that um, is the exact same plus their stuff. I've had people that are gang stalkers that had my pages and groups integrated into one of their profiles, like something that's completely not allowed. These are my assets on my account. This is basically account fraud. And, and, but they create custom applications based on your profile and your account. And I believe that long-term, I mean, I won't go into it, but I believe that long-term meta will collapse over this. I believe Google and Apple and Microsoft are all going to have huge, um, class action lawsuits and things like that. But um, I know that they use Google a lot and I know that they use Meta a lot. I know they can get into all of my Apple stuff also. And I know that they use Microsoft stuff a lot. One time a gang stalker made a video of themselves hacking into my phone somehow on the PowerShell using my, uh, my Google account. And with my Google account, they, they put all this stuff into PowerShell and they were able to remotely access my phone. All right. So, and I've got a video of them doing that. I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got videos of all the stuff that I just mentioned. Everything that I just mentioned about how they can do all of this stuff and have your assets on Facebook and have those, those uh, connection options on your profile page and, and how they can have your stuff integrated into a secondary profile and how they can have uh, secondary logins that log into your same account. I have videos of every bit of that and a lot of it is on this channel. Um, so that's just some of the ways that they operate. But overall, I've had many gang stalkers on my neural monitoring and I have had many strangers involved with my neural monitoring uh, and even even half the gang stalkers that I deal with on a daily, they are strangers, but uh, I mean in public, okay? Because if they put your neural monitoring to public and then any person that has neural monitoring that operates as a gang stalker can see, oh, this person's around here. Let's mess with him. Let's get involved. And then you can have strangers become involved. And that's where street theater comes from. And I, I've seen videos where people say, I've never mentioned street theater and, and, real life gang stalking. And I, I posted live videos of people trying to run me off the road of people dropping smoke bombs in front of me of my maps going crazy and directing me all the wrong ways while all of these things are going on. And I got a bunch of street theater stuff going on. I've had people, uh, and there's live videos of that where I put it on my channel. Okay. I'm not sure if I've moved it to the membership or if it's still available. I've got over 10,000 videos on this channel and it's a little bit difficult to manage and I don't, you know, so, um, but I've, I've walked through train stations, you know, in like Metro areas and had people walk past me playing a song that I made that I never put out publicly, you know, stuff like that, that street theater. And you have all of that kind of stuff when they allow strangers to get onto your neural monitoring because somebody has control over your neural monitoring. And they're all like the microchip thing. It doesn't, there's no such thing. It's a neurological broadcast frequency. Okay. Just like um, all of these devices, you can look up and, and find where you can wear some kind of thing on your head and it can pick up the thoughts that you're having and make you speak or do all kinds of selections or operate computers or, or many other things. Okay. It's, it's a very, well-known technology that's available for a lot of different applications. So it's not far-fetched to, to talk about it. Okay. And for people to be using it as a satellite broadcast to gang stalk you and to mind rape you. Yes. It, it's unusual to talk about that, but it absolutely is happening. Uh, 100%. It's 100% happening. So 
I, I, I get like off on these little sidetracks because there's so much stuff to talk about when it comes to all of this, this gang stalking stuff. But um, in general, you're going to have the same gang stalkers that you're dealing with, okay? They are also on the same exact neural monitoring. They didn't go get a microchip implanted in their head. They just have taken control over a profile online, on this online interface, whether it's a program or a website or something you just put into a command line, they've taken control over their neurological broadcast frequency and the profile and the interface that it is. It's like a social media or something. And they, once you have yours, then you can disconnect from everybody and do whatever you want to, unfriend, block, all of those kind of things. And then you can't have those people connecting to you unconsensually or touching you with broadcasts or doing any of those things. So gang stalkers have that. They have control and access and uh, complete control over their own neural monitoring. And that's how they can connect themselves to you because you don't have control over your neural monitoring. But it's very likely that one person has complete control over your neural monitoring, whether they bought it, whether they took it from somebody or hacked it from somebody or whatever the rules are that allows them to own your neural monitoring, like a, like a slave trade or like a human trafficking, whatever lets them own your neural monitoring, they also can control who can come on or off. And, and so if they make a deal with one group of gang stalkers, like in my case, uh, I've, I've had many gang stalkers and I've had public people, but in general, the overall situation for years and years, up to a decade, has been the same group of people. And I believe that they're related. I believe that they're a family. They might not. There's, there's four guys full time and there's one guy that's about half the time. And then I think they have a few of their buddies here and there. But I think that overall, they're one family. And there might be one or two of them that are friends, but... They're a family of people that have gang stalking. I believe a couple of them are like brothers or fathers and son or something like that. And these guys have a deep, deep obsession. And I have to believe that it has a lot to do with your neurological processes because they love to be connected to you. And they can literally sit there and pay attention to you. I can wake up at four o'clock in the morning and have one of them start saying something. You know, and talk or talking about my dreams or, you know, always trying to look for an opportunity to involve themselves, almost like begging for attention. And this level of obsession, uh, it wouldn't exist were they not completely overwhelmed and preoccupied and 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 they, they, they love you. They love the way your mind works. And another reason is that um, they're they're invested. So. Like, for example, if I put out videos on this YouTube channel and I do it for uh, eight years, you know, and I got 10,000 subscribers and um, I'm invested in this. You know, I have I have all these people that watch my videos and I have all these videos and different levels and all of this stuff. And and over time, it can become something very big. And that's the same thing with these gang stalkers. They put out these live streams of EMF broadcast stuff and targeting you and and they've gained a following and they've gained uh, ways to try to monetize that, whether it be uh, memberships or advertising or um, or allowing people to pay some fee to come on and participate in a live stream uh, about targeting you so they can stream that over their own neural monitoring. All of these things are ways that they could possibly monetize the situation. And so they're invested in it. They're also in it with some obligations, okay? They've been doing horrible things to you and trying to destroy your life and bothering your loved ones, women and children, and even trying to isolate you or doing anything they can to try to steer your life in the direction that works best for them. And so there's a lot of liabilities there. And if they walk away when it's gotten this deep, when I've been talking about it public on the internet for all these years and they've been doing all this horrible stuff and they literally, this, the same group of guys been on my neural monitoring every single day for a, 10 years, for 10 years. And if they walk away 
and I was to gain access to neural monitoring somehow, then that's a huge, huge problem for them. And not just for them, for everybody else that does the same type of activities. So it's very important for them to try to make sure that I never get neural monitoring. And it's not going to work, but they're going to have to sit there and invest all of their time and all of their energy into trying to get, uh, make sure that I never get neural monitoring, trying to destroy my life, which they're failing at miserably. And uh, it's, it's so dumb to their personalities. They're dumb people. They're, they're, they've been, they've wasted a decade sitting here watching my life and, you know, they just want to make fun of me for this and that and blah, blah, or whatever I'm doing. And, and then soon all I got to do is think about, wow, you, you know, you've been sitting there for a decade. Uh, you know, you probably weigh 400 pounds sitting in some uh, slimy chair in your basement somewhere on a computer with a mind control thing on your head, wasting your whole life. OK, and these guys, I'm, I would estimate that they're in between um, 25 and 50, maybe even 60. OK, what is 10 years of that? That's a huge portion of their life that they've dedicated to uh, being obsessed with me. And you always get to comment, what? what, you're not that special. You're not special. Why would these people do that? Blah. I don't know. Why don't you ask them? Because they absolutely 100 percent have done that and they are still doing that on a daily basis and they show no signs of stopping or going away. So there's a huge obsession and it's really sick. It's really, they have psychological problems with obsession. And the person that has my neural monitoring is also very obsessed, although she's not one of the four or five people that are doing this on the daily basis. She just has the arrangement with them. Okay, but but the obsession level is absurd. It's absurd. And what's happening is they're watching it slip away from them. They're watching it slip away from them. And that brings me into the next uh, subjects of this video. So education. Education is very important. And if you're somebody that can sit there and go through all of the websites or do the uh, the Google trainings or um, study on your own and read books and do that kind of thing about computer science. Great. Good job. Do that. And you could probably be somebody that, uh, could be a hacker or, uh, at least stop them from targeting you, uh, or maybe even gain neural monitoring in a matter of a few years, probably maybe, maybe two to five years, somewhere in there. Um, if you're not that person, if you're easily to get sidetracked and, and you can't stay focused on one thing and every every um, now and then you, you switch up your direction and then you need some structure. And if you need some structure, then aside from studying it on your own, you should go to school. You should go to school. And so let me tell you about my journey with that. All right. So, uh I've always known the basics of computers. I can be a computer operator, okay? I can use, a, I'm a user level computer person and I've always been okay with that and I could do plenty of stuff with that. I could change hard drives and load software and I know how to work with file systems and, and even shortcuts and like basically a semi-advanced user. And that was it. That doesn't get you anywhere when it comes to being hacked and trying to get your neural monitoring or protecting yourself from all of this and protecting your family from all of this. It doesn't get you anywhere. So in 2017, I started watching a lot of videos and studying. I started from the beginning, like HTML, you know, and I started and I actually built a website. I don't know. Maybe you guys remember the telepathic saga or telepathic saga.com. And I had the website up for like a year when I bought like a one year hosting package. And then well, I never actually made it functional. It was, it was, it looked like a good website, you know, and you could go through to all the different pages and it had like some of my videos and pages from Facebook and different things was what were like integrated into it. And I built that from scratch in a script editor. It was not like some Wix or something where you like, we'll build your website for you. It was nothing like that. I built it from scratch and I started to get into uh, PHP a little bit and 
network stuff a little bit, like running local hosts and enabling these different languages in the configuration files. And um, that's what can make your website functional. You can make a website all day. It doesn't do anything. You can't, you can't buy anything. There's no checkout. You can't subscribe to a newsletter. Uh, you, you, you can't check uh, somebody's you know, profile on a forum. You can't sign up. Nothing. It's not functional. So functionality is different. So HTML and CSS, you can build a website, but it doesn't do anything but click around the pages and you can just look at it. But if you want it to do something, you have to link that up to a database. So you have to understand databases and you also have to understand server side languages. And so you have to have hosting and you have to write in server side languages and create all of those back and forth communications between a website and a server so and a web and a database all right so um the problem was that i kind of got sidetracked in life and never really kept doing that and it was starting to make a difference because they were starting to kind of back off on the hacking of my stuff and it could have easily led down a pathway that could have been trouble for them but i don't have the discipline, and I can admit that, I don't have the discipline to stick with things for long periods of time to become a supreme expert. And so I need some structure. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I love. There's, I, I uh, you know, dance, uh, and I, I, I get pretty good at times. And then I kind of fade away for a little while, and then I come back, and then it's, I don't have the structure. And I, I should be hanging around with people that do this every day and staying involved because I love it, making music. Um, there's, I've got songs that I made that I feel like are decent 20 years ago, you know, as a, as a young person. And if I could stick with that, even in the last few years, I've made a few songs here and there, but I never stick with this as something that I do consistently. And I think that if I did that consistently, that I could uh, have more success at it. And the same thing with computer programming in general, uh, anything computer stuff. I didn't stick with it. And in 2020, I started thinking about it, you know, and by 2021, I started looking into the processes of going to college for computer science. So I got everything set up, got everything ready and then enrolled. And in 2022, I started going right uh, in January of 2022, right at the beginning, I started going and I've been going ever since. And I'm um, most of the way through a programming degree, computer programming, it's a, one of the uh, subcategories of computer science in general. And I'm, I'm more than halfway, I'm most of the way through this degree. And uh, it's been two years now, almost two whole years, and I'm doing very well with that. And the structure has been great for me because if you don't do it, you fail. And I'm not going to fail. I won't fail. I'm, I'm more hard-headed than I am structured. So uh, it's just like with these gang stalkers. Like, they've been winning. They've been winning for all these years and able to do what they want to do. And I haven't taken the steps and followed through with what it's going to take to defeat them. But the last couple years, it's been different, okay? In 2020, I've decided that I wasn't going to be a broke person anymore. And I wasn't going to allow them to destroy my life anymore and I started to move in that direction and I've had some setbacks but overall the mindset is move in that direction okay to so move in the direction to have success and knowledge that can get you out of this situation I've given up on the government helping us um, maybe there's still hope to get attorneys to help us and that's something that I'll be looking into uh, still at some point in the future when I feel like I'm completely ready to take that step and I have the financial stability to, to lose if I, if I were to lose because I understand that the judicial system is corrupt and that remote neural monitoring is not something that is going to be easy for them to come out and admit to or talk about. Gang stalking in general. Uh, the hacking is a different story. 
if you can prove it and they did it, then they're going to have to be arrested and, and charged. And you would have to, you would have grounds for, um, compensation, you know, in like in, uh, lawsuits and things like that. And that's probably the better pathway. And that's what I really just wanted to start doing computer stuff. So the computer programming degree will be done, um, less than a year. And I'm also doing another degree, a uh, cybersecurity degree. And I'm, I'm going to basically by the, I've got it mapped out to by the end of 24, if not complete, I'll be very close to complete with I mean, 25, I'm sorry, by the end of 25. So two more years, a uh, little more than two more years, I'll be very close to or finished with two computer science degrees, a computer programming degree and a computer uh, cybersecurity degree. Okay. And from there, I can look into more because I'm not stopping there. And will I learn enough by then to defeat these gang stalkers? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, definitely have enough to get probably a pretty decent job in that field. Uh, so, you know, and I, I don't hate my job now, but I, I definitely want to move in that direction because it's what I want to do. Um, the whole thing has, has been a good decision. And I, I, I'm going to kind of mix up this last subject with financial things. Okay. Financial things are very important. And if you follow any of the financial people that talk about stuff or stock market people or people that tell you how to invest or or talk about saving money or any of this stuff, it starts to be motivating. OK, and I've followed people like that or listened to people on the radio and stuff like that for 20 years. And you get this idea like, oh, well, I'm smarter than them and and I can do this and I can do that. And then. When it doesn't work out, you end up back on these basic boring plans that can lead you to being wealthy and well off. And that's kind of where I'm at. I still take a, a lot of risks with some of my investment stuff, but um, I'm definitely looking into more like slow growing, very steady, solid mutual funds and and even just saving money that I couldn't lose even if the stock market crashed and uh, all of those kind of things. And I do the 401k and all of that stuff too. But um, a lot of that stuff is boring. It's boring. And especially if you're kind of into finance stuff, like, you, you know, you're going to want to be doing like stock options or crypto and doing all this different stuff. And, and it's all very risky and it's all uh, exciting. But what happens a lot of times is, is it doesn't work out. You lose money. And the biggest thing about, uh, finding yourself in a better position is to not lose your capital in the first place, your money. Don't lose your money. Uh, if you're losing your money, then what's the point of it all? You might as well have just kept it and went out and partied or something like that. So don't lose your money and to not lose your money, it gets boring. And when you get really into this kind of stuff, you know, you, you get paid and you, you check and you're doing your budget. You got to have a written budget down and you're doing your budget and you allocate this much to savings and you put this in investments and all your credit cards are paid off and you're saving this much money and, and, and then it's done, you know, and then you got to wait two weeks for another paycheck and you're sitting there like, mm, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And that's where the school thing, the college has come in uh, as a big deal for me because Rather than sit here and waste my time or think about too many things, it, investing and and the long run plan, it requires a lot of patience. And to help me with those patients, I've been staying very busy with work and school. And when you have assignments due and you need to sit there and study stuff and read books about economics and and uh, different programming languages and stuff like that and do projects and you actually think about it. And I, and I get like, like A's, all A's. I had one C and all A's for every other class. So I have a 3.73, um, which I, I think comes out to, uh, maybe mid nineties, low to mid nineties total. Uh, and, and it, it takes up a lot of my time and it helps me to get through, uh, to the next paycheck where I can 
you know, not, not like I'm living paycheck to paycheck, but where I can uh, allocate everything and stick to a plan. It, it helps me to have the patience to stick to a plan and not jump into something else because I need some excitement or anything like that. And it takes the long term plan. And that's, you know, these gang stalkers, they have a long term plan. They want to stay on your channel and they want to just sit there, sit at home uh, on their computer with their mind control headgear on their on their head with their eyes covered up and just sit there as a broadcast doing their broadcast stuff all day, every day. And they don't care about regular life. They're degenerates. They're like they're <laughs> they're rejects of society. They really are. And if they weren't, they wouldn't be sitting there worried about you every single day for years and years and years. And if you have gang stalkers on your channel that are bothering you like that, it's very likely that they are the same guys and each of them has uh, their their little things that they do. They all, like if I have one guy, he's he's got, you know, this and this and this little voice settings that he likes to use and, and these are his little phrases that he likes to put out there and they'll say something that's supposed to, you know, like, like they always do this. One of them, one of them, he's the youngest one on my channel. I could tell he's like a little child. He acts like a child. And he always does this stupid little playground bully laugh. <laughs> like he's like he's laughing at me like I'm so stupid. And then it's a it's designed to make you feel some kind of way. You know, and then you're thinking of what you just did was that is that so stupid? And then then you're caught up in his game. Then you're caught up in uh, well, now what can he say next? And now live stream on. Now he gets a little bit of attention. So he gets to interact with you. And that's, that's like what they want. And most of the, anything that they do is, uh, they react to you, but they react to you in a way that's designed to make you react to them and to make you think things. And it's, it's a mind control technology, but they can't control your mind. They can't make you think what they want to, but they can have a huge influence and to be able to receive somebody's thoughts. And they love the mind games. They love the mind games. They love to sit there and they don't care about regular life. They're not successful and they're not cool people. And you're talking about gang stalkers. Okay. If you give uh, a whole bunch of people a, a, a car, Okay, most of them are going to have a transportation for them and their family and go to the grocery store and go to work. And they're going to take care of the car and do all of that kind of stuff. But you're going to have some idiots to go out here drunk and drive 110 miles an hour on the expressway and kill other people and do stupid things. Okay, you're always going to have stupid people that do stupid things. And when it comes to anything, so with neural monitoring, there's millions of people that have it. And then there's this small group of people that use it for gang stalking, okay? Mainly young, immature people and degenerate rejects after that, okay? These are gang stalkers, and they love to do it. I don't, I don't care. I don't let them destroy my life. I don't let them influence me. I think they're dumb every time they, they speak up, and that's it. And I have a long-term plan. I'm going to put myself in a financial position to where I can have what I need. I can take care of my people. I can get whatever I want, go wherever I want to go. They don't stop me from doing anything. And I'm also going to secure my future. And when all of these things start to, to fall into place, it's a long road. You know, you, you're you not going to be rich in a year or two years, uh, not, not being safe and, Eventually, five years down the road, it starts to look good. It looks good. And then 10 years down the road, you're, you're just about wealthy at that point. Okay, it's not, it's, not, it's not what you make. It's how much you spend. It's how you manage it. Uh, it is what you make too, but it's, it's, it has more to do with management and the behaviors. Like I heard Dave Ramsey saying, like, uh, and, and his people on his show, and they, they do a great show. I don't agree with everything they say. I always think I'm smarter than them, but they're a bunch of millionaires that'll tell you how to be a millionaire and, and it works. And it, everybody who follows it eventually could become a millionaire. And they, they say it's not a math problem, it's a behavior problem. And that's true. 
that's true. And if you can be disciplined and patient and stick to a plan, you'll find yourself in 10 years in a position, if you've been going to school, learning about computer science and saving and being safe and working hard, and you'll find yourself in a position to have enough knowledge and enough financial support to get attorneys and to really flip this whole thing upside down with gang stalking. I'll be that guy. I'll be that guy that has the success. And see, every time that you uh, make it through another semester and get two or three A's if you're going part-time or four or five if you're going full-time, every time you make it through a semester and, and you have that success, that's a loss for them. That's a big L for these gang stalkers. And every time you, uh, you get another paycheck, you know, and you're doing well, especially you get a paycheck and you don't even have a bill to pay because you're, you've been managing it well. And you get to put all of that towards savings and investment and, and go have a nice dinner and send a, a couple close family members that you care about a, a little bit of money. You know, and when you can do that, that's a big L for them. And what happens is they, they start to look stupid to other gang stalkers or especially other people that have neural monitoring. And they say, you're dragging this out. You know, this, this guy's on the right pathway and, and you know, he's... He's about to have a computer programming degree and then he's going to get a cybersecurity degree. And then after that, he's going to, uh, you know, go to some reputable university and end up with like a master's degree. And he's going to be doing like YouTube channels, showing people how to make sure that you idiots don't hack into their phone and what to do about it if you do. And the financial uh, mentality is strong. OK, I'm, I'm not a rich person, but. I can do the math and calculate things. And, uh, you know, even some of these college math classes, they really, they, they, I'm taking accounting, uh, next, next semester. And, um, and I really want to, it's not required of my degree, but I'm going to end up taking statistics too, because I hear so many, uh, financial people say how important it is. So I'm going to take statistics and accounting, and I've already took some, uh, some other, math classes that have helped me a lot with understanding uh, just in general things about m money. And when when you're into financial stuff, you start to equate all of these math problems like, oh, that's how I can do this and I can calculate this and I can calculate uh, compound interest over the course of 20 years and this is how much I need to put in to be a multi-millionaire and all this kind of stuff. Okay, and that's a big L. That's a big L for gang stalkers. And one of the biggest things is that they continue to hang around and, and try to impose their um, desires and their direction for your life. And you have to take control of your own life. And I think the way to do it is to become educated in finance and educated with computer stuff. That's what I think. And I think that it's not going to be a problem you can solve tomorrow. But, you know, here I am 10 years later, 11 years later. Okay. And I've, I've known about it for like nine years. And, um, the first two years were just like him hacking on and, and kind of preparing up to the point where they were going to just drop the bomb and they have these obsessed idiots sit around on mind control all day for a decade. Okay. That's, it's a, it's a slow process. Okay. You have to trust the process. And if you start now, then in 10 years, you can have the knowledge to make sure that they can never do anything to you or to prove that they're doing something to you, to gain the evidence that can gain you millions of dollars in lawsuits. You can already have millions of dollars if you follow uh, a solid, good financial plan for a decade, right? So if I'd have started doing all of this back then, I'm mad, I'm mad at myself, but still, don't waste any more time. Don't, don't wait, sit around and wait on the government to help you. Our government's ridiculous. I, I'm not going to go into that either. It's like $34 trillion in debt and people want to rely on like social security and food stamps and all this type of stuff. And who knows? when this whole thing could collapse, really. Um, you got other countries trying to collaborate and run run the world c 
currency out of the dollar and do all kinds of stuff like that. And, and we've been spoiled and we live uh, beyond our means in general as people, as society. And um, even a poor person on welfare in America is better off than most people in the world. And there's a lot to be said for that, you know, and there's there's it's not something you want to depend on. It's unsustainable long term and you want to be able to depend on yourself. You want to be valuable. You want to be a valuable person. So you want to educate yourself so you can be valuable to a lot of people. Okay. And, and, and working hard. Yes, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to physically work hard sometimes. But it's not about physically working hard. You're not gonna you're not gonna work yourself out there with a shovel into being a millionaire and getting off neural monitoring. You're gonna study. You're gonna study computer science and you're gonna study uh, or whatever else, business and or engineering or, or finance, real estate. All of these things. Study it. Study it and become somebody with that's valuable and work on your financial future and be in it for the long term. These gang stalkers ain't going nowhere until we get rid of them. They're worse than a a, a credit card debt. That's 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 my advice for you guys. Get in it for the long term. Start to learn about important things that can secure your future with knowledge and and financial means. And get onto a, a good financial plan where you invest some money and save some money and you live on less money than you make and work towards a long term goal because you might as well start now. I know how hard it is to be targeted. I know what you guys are going through and I um just I guess maybe I'm just that hard headed. Um but now uh, I have a plan, and the plan is to uh, be smart with my money and to get smart with education and then to share that knowledge and to use those resources to defeat these gang stalkers. And it might take 10 years. It might take two years. It could happen next week. Um, that there's, there's people out there that I know that have neural monitoring that are not gang stalkers that might help me. They might help me at, at some point, and I don't know. You know, I've, I've had those situations uh, become feasible over the last few years. And, you know, and I, I'm not giving up on that. But, uh, but overall, I depend, I'm depending on myself. And there's a lot of other people that are depending on me and even like family and, and stuff like that. And, and even if they don't understand about neural monitoring and what that is and, and how that's affecting their life, I know. I know what's going on and, and I have to protect more than just myself. And it's a responsibility that I've given to myself to make sure that I can try to get uh, this targeting thing to be over with, at least for me and my family and share as much knowledge as I'm able to about what you guys can do to also, uh, rid your life of these type of problems. But it really, it really starts with you. Okay. They, it's not likely that they target very successful people that have it all together. But if you can become that, then it makes what they're doing to you a big mistake. Whether they're trapped in it or not, whether you can get out of it, uh, still to be seen. But it's definitely a big L for them when you start moving in this direction. And they hate every bit of it. It makes them mad. It makes them look stupid. It makes them feel stupid. That makes them even madder. But the bottom line is you can win and they will lose. But you have to take the steps to make that happen. And you can't rely on the government to make that happen because they're not helping us. So we're going to help ourselves. And that's it. All right. Uh, 10,000 subscribers, 10,000 targeted individuals on this channel. I've maybe seen like one or two other channels that have large uh, f subscriptions at, about targeting, you know, but... Um, I don't do anything special with my videos and I don't usually make documentaries and uh, 
you know, I'm not on a special microphone or, and doing all of that. I'm just me talking about my life and about being targeted and about remote neural monitoring and talking to you guys. And that's what I've done. And as you, you notice, I'm doing less videos. And as I move forward, the videos will be probably a lot more informative, less frequent and more professional um, because I've built this from the ground up. You know, I remember when I, I remember when I, when I was trying to get to like a hundred subscribers and then a thousand subscribers, you know, and then you want 10,000 views. And then, you know, when, when you hit like a million views and now 10,000 subscribers is a pretty big deal for me. And I feel like it's, um, a testament to what's going on in the world that we're being targeted and we're all in agreement about in general, what's happening to us. And we have disagreements about how it's happening and um, how they do it. But I'm telling you what I know to be a fact of how they do it. Um, I, I'm not made it up and I haven't lied about it. And if I was a propaganda artist, I wouldn't be here still eight years later with a steady growing channel. It wouldn't be like that. So I'm not a propagandist. The reason that people watch my channel, the reason that you guys watch my channel, and the reason that it makes some of you gang stalkers out there so mad is because I'm explaining it correctly. And that's why people come into the comments and my messages and say, that's exactly what I've been going through. Not, not one or two people, hundreds, if not thousands of people have come to me and said, that is exactly what I'm dealing with. That is exactly what I'm going through. You're the first place I found that actually describes what's really happening to me. And, and thank you so much for, uh, for this information. It, it really saved my life. And I appreciate that. I appreciate to know that. And it, it gives me a lot of motivation. And even though having a public YouTube channel about this has caused a lot of people to think I'm crazy or to turn away from me or not want to be involved with me. Uh, it's had a great, uh, it, it's, I want to say a great effect. It's not that it's great, but it, uh, uh, it's had a huge effect on my life and my personal life as well. And it's, there's times when, you know, I, I have my, I have my life together. Okay. Um, you know, I, it's, it's, I'm, it's not too great, all right, because I should have started a long time ago, but I definitely have my life together. And sometimes it's embarrassing when you're talking to people that don't have our problems or they don't know about this to talk about this or to to have them find my YouTube channel and say, whoa, whoa, what is this? What is this? You know, uh, you, you seem like normal to me, but I, I mean, what is all this? And it's embarrassing. And there's times when I wanted to take my whole channels down and just go away from all of that. But you guys, you know, you guys follow the, this channel and you guys listen to me and you guys, I feel, have a better understanding of what's going on because of my videos. And so that's why I'll never take the channel down. I'll never take it down. And you guys will always be able to come look at these videos and see my story um, and how it's evolved. I mean, I, the, some of the stuff is very embarrassing. Some of the videos I put out is very embarrassing. You know, if I come in here and say, oh, they're attacking my genitals or, you know, got broadcast on my face and like, you can't see a broadcast on my face. Right. And it was like, well, who's this guy talking about broadcast attacking his genitals and stuff like that? I mean, they were doing it last night. But I mean, I, I've talked about it enough and it is embarrassing to talk about these kind of things. And it makes a lot of people think that you're nuts. But I, I don't care because I'm, I'm an independent person and I can do my thing either way. Um, I don't like that a lot of people think stuff like that about me, but I think it's more important that the truth be out there. All right. So that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for all of the support. 10,000 strong on this channel and steady growing. And I will continue to give you guys the updates now and then about what's going on with my life. And I'm going to continue to study and build my, uh, myself into somebody that can defeat these gang stalkers and, and truly expose what they're doing. All right. So thank you guys for watching.